Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in and don't forget you can read my work on ESPN.com. And if you want to become a club member, you can do that as well. Going to the Empire Media YouTube page, see the word join, click on there, go from there, et cetera. For you gold members, I'm going to do a private Zoom on Wednesday night. So join me there, 7.30 Eastern time. And we'll, you can I'll answer your questions. And then for the rest of the members, you'll get to see that later on. Anyway, in a minute, I'm going to be joined by former Arizona State head coach, Herm Edwards, who coached, recruited and coached Jaden Daniels at Arizona State, has stayed in touch with him and has followed his progress. And wanted I wanted to bring him on to share his insight. Of course, Edwards now... Um, is an ESPN NFL college draft analyst. So he knows his stuff. So he knows Jaden Daniels well, and he provides really good insight. So stay tuned for that. Now I got one little piece of information to share with you before I get to Herm Edwards. So Washington on Tuesday re-signed veteran swing tackle Cornelius Lucas. You probably already know that by now. Good move. He needed a backup tackle. He provides depth at right and left tackle. That's a swing tackle, of course. And, you know, they're not done looking for another, for a starting tackle because they haven't filled that spot at all. So not done, but a good move to bring back Lucas. He is, he's been a good player for them in his role since he has been here. So that's it for me. Now, here's my conversation with ESPN NFL and college analyst, Herm Edwards, who coached Jaden Daniels at Arizona State. Um, Herm, for, first, you know Jaden very yeah. well. And there's going to be a lot of interest in sure. him for the for the draft. What is it? What do you? What stands out to you about Jaden Daniels? Well, I, I think the first thing that stands out for me, you know, I had him when he was a, a freshman, and um, his maturity. I've watched him grow. I mean, I've, I've always stayed in communication with Jaden. We have a pretty good relationship, but I think his maturity as a player, um, his ability, obviously, to play the game, you can that that's on tape. But I just think his growth in the classroom, um, his ability to learn how to study film, uh, to process information, because his talent is his talent. I mean, it, it jumps off the, the tape on you. But I had him when he was a freshman. He started as a freshman for me. And, you know, when, when, you, when you're young like that, <laughs> regardless of, of how much talent you have, there's still a learning curve. Right. And I just watched him mature the last couple of years, um, especially at LSU and obviously won the Heisman Trophy. That says a lot about his work ethic. Where, where I mean, because everybody, every person, every player has to mature to some level. So what are the things for his game or for him personally that you felt where he had to mature and then you saw it happen? Just, uh, you know, being more patient in the pocket, obviously, um, because when you're young, and especially at the quarterback position, you have his kind of skill set where you have the ability to make big plays with your legs. Uh, at times, rather than sitting in there, and letting it all develop, you're going to take off, right? Uh, well, I've, I've watched that. Um, I, he, he's a little, he's bigger than he was when when we had him. Uh, he was about 100 and I don't know. I don't even think he was 190 pounds. <laughs> you know, he's a slight guy, but he's durable. I mean, he's and he's you know he knows how to he he knows how to fall. I've always said that about quarterbacks that leave the pocket. You better know how to fall when they tackle you. Uh, so, you know, he doesn't miss, he doesn't miss time. Um, and I just think, you know, him playing all these games have helped him. I mean, he's played a lot of college yeah. football. I think was it 50 something games or something like that. So he has a lot of experience playing football. And I think the more you play, it's like anything else, the more experience you gain, but also knowledge and confidence. And so, you know, I, I've seen that watching him. I've, I've, you know, I used to talk to him before the games or, we would text or something, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't coaching him anymore, but we were always in communication. Uh, and so, so I, I just like where he's at right now. And, you know, and you know what it takes to succeed in the NFL. So, you know, there's, what are the things that you see in him that says this translates really well to the NFL? Well, I think obviously if, if Washington decides to select him, um, he, he, he has to realize and, and, we, we've kind of, you know, talked about it. I said, look, I said, you know, if, if they decide to select you, 
I said, you have to realize you're going to a franchise right now that um, they need some help. I mean, th this team, you know, last year struggled. I mean, you know, in a lot of different ways. And, and um, you know, you're going to be the you're going to be the guy that's supposed to resurrect this team. And there's a lot of pressure in that. But but he likes that. I mean, he can handle that. He he really can. It won't be too big for him. Um, the thing he does is when he plays football, he understands at the quarterback position how important it is to protect the ball. Yeah. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. He doesn't turn the ball over a lot, right? So he gets that part of it. And that's the hardest thing for young quarterbacks, I think, when they come in the league. You know, there's they, they, they so they have the enthusiasm and they feel like I got to carry the team and I got to make a play. And lo and behold, they turn the ball over. And, and that's and, and you look at this team last year, minus 14 in the giveaway takeaways. They, they were 18 interceptions, I think 11 fumbles, um, only scored 19 points a game. They, they struggled offensively. And here's the, here's the next part. And I think that they'll realize these guys gave up 60 sacks. Now, he cuts down half of that with his ability to run, right? Because, if it, because he can leave the pocket and go make plays. So, defensively, you got to play him a little bit different. now. This is a different cat when he goes back. You, you better make sure you got a spy on him. You better make sure you, your rush lanes are in coordination with the call you have up front because he'll leave the pocket. And when he runs, it's not for five yards. It's going to be 20 yards. It's going to be 30 yards. You know, And he's a little faster than you think. He's a long strider, but he covers a lot of ground, and he's a really good runner. So I think that's an attribute for him. That that already you bring when when if you draft him he brings that to the table, right? You're a defensive guy. You, like every defensive coach I've been around, hates facing a Jaden Daniels. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, any any quarterback that can run that can make plays with his legs, that's an issue defensively because now you you have to have integrity in your rush lanes. Uh, at times, in, in certain calls, in certain situations, you're going to put a spy guy on him, right? Either a linebacker or a safety. You got to – what has happened to you when you get a quarterback like this, it's 11-on-11 11 11 football. It's an even playing field now because of the quarterback. Somebody has to know where this quarterback's at. And everybody has to be on point to understand, hey, look, in this call, I got the quarterback. In this call, I got to contain the quarterback. In this call – I'm a safety. I got the quarterback. And so that's part of the deal. And, and you know that, and, and that's stressful for a defense. So what, you know, talk about running too. And one of the things you notice, first of all, he doesn't shy away from things, but he always gets up. But I remember watching a game. I remember watching a game when he was at Arizona state where mm -hmm. it's like on a two point conversion where he lowers his shoulder. I'm like, I'm looking, <laughs> there are six guys around him. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Like, and he gets through and like, but he lowers his shoulder and gets through and like, how did he do that? Yeah, he's 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 unique. I mean, he's a unique runner. And I always told him this, you know, when you run, I said, and we used to laugh, you know, uh, he we always he always hugged me before the game. And I would tell him, I said, now know when the journey's over now. <laughs> Just know when the journey's over. Just I said, you got, I said, Jaden, the most important thing you have to realize, you have all this talent and all this ability, but you got to play the next play. You can't be standing on the sideline with me talking about my shoulders hurt and my legs hurt because I was running. You can't do that. You know, you can't miss plays. And to his credit, didn't miss a lot of time. You know, he doesn't miss a lot of time. But but he he's a he's a smart runner. He knows how to protect himself. And you know, he looks like a little, you know, he reminds me a lot of Randall Cunningham. Because yeah. Randall Cunningham had that same kind of frame. You know, he was he was slight, uh, but was strong, knew how to run. You know, almost like Gumby. I mean, when you hit him, he could he could contort his body, right? And I was with Randall when Randall came in as a rookie when I was in Philadelphia. And so Jaden has a lot of those traits of as far as what he looks like. Right. You know, he's not an imposing big guy. He's a lot like Herbert and those kind of guys where he's thick. He's 250 pounds. He's not that. Right. But he's strong enough and he's smart enough to know when to protect himself. So you would have seen the progression as a passer as well. And you talk about the studying and all that. How much was it related to that? Or were there other things that he was working on because he did improve like on the downfield stuff? He did improve. Yeah. 
that, that that's what he was really good at throwing the long ball. I mean, he he had a touch and accuracy to that. And I think the hardest ball for most quarterbacks to throw are the little five yarders, mm-hmm. right? The swing passes to the backs, keep them running, keep them moving. Don't throw behind them. You know, it takes accuracy to do that. It takes timing to do that. And I think he's developed that obviously um, versus press coverage. You know, where do I throw the ball? Right. Uh, I got to throw it away from the safety is what technique is the corner playing. Right. I mean, you got to learn all that. And that takes film study. It takes a lot of work with your receivers. And, you know, he, he's put, he's put the time in, you know, he, he is, he's worked at it. You know, it was when you're a freshman, you come in, you're living off talent. We all do. I mean, you know, in in the NFL, when you're a rookie, you come in like, okay, I'm not going to learn it all right away. My first year there, there's this learning curve, but he understands what his strengths are. And he understands how to play to those strengths. And, you know, the thing about Jaden is the game is never too big for him. Mm-hmm. The, the lights are too bright. I mean, you see guys when the lights are bright, they run to the shade. No, he runs to the spotlight. He's not afraid of it, right? He He's very competitive. He's a competitive guy. You know, he he really is. He, 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 he wants to win. He likes to win, you know, and, and so – it doesn't come on that way because he's not a vocal guy. You know, he he's not one of those animated kind of guys. He's really kind of right here all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes you look at him and go, what's it? He's just here. Mm-hmm. You know, he can make a good play, and when he does, it's boom, and then it's done. And he's moved on. You know, he's going to the next play. If it's a series of, of, of bad events, you know, comes over, we used to sit and talk. You good, coach? I'm good. I said, okay, let's move on. And he he can move on. He doesn't he doesn't dwell in the past. He lets it go and he moves to the next play. Was there a game when you're watching him last year? Was there a game, a play, a sequence that you saw from him that you said, oh, dude's ready? Oh, I, I just think, you know, that offense they had in, in those receivers that they had down there at LSU. Yeah. I mean, um, his ability to just duel, you know, with when he knew that he had to score points. I mean, this was an offense that needed to score points, right? right? I mean, their defense was okay, but it was really an offensive show. Yes. And it should be because all those skilled players. But it's just, you know, just watching him just throwing the ball in, in, in big moments of games when he had to score. You know, when he knew that, hey, you know what, this game ain't going to be 17-13. This is going to be in the 40s. <laughs> And he knew it, right? And 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 he understood it. He said, "This is what I got to do this week. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta throw this many. I gotta make it happen." So, I just enjoyed watching him play from afar. And like I said, we would, we would text each other, and I'd wish him luck. Or when it was a big game against another, you know, big SEC opponent. But but I thought he played well all year. What did you learn about him? Just like what did you discover about him when you're recruiting him? I mean, he's I've always heard like he's a, he was a 4.0 student. He's you know yeah. obviously a four star quarterback. What was some of the thing early things that that really kind of drew you to him in addition to the talent? I just think he's a he he's a he's a really he's a good young man. I mean, he's a you know, he he doesn't he's a star but he doesn't he doesn't need the star status. Mm-hmm. He just wants to be one of the guys. He's a giver. You know, he's a giver. He's that kind of guy. He doesn't like ah it's about me. He's not into all that. He just wants to win, he, you know, and, and, and he's, he's thoughtful. Um, I mean, look, I got two young daughters. I got one in one, a senior, one, a junior. Them, those are like his sisters, mm-hmm. right. When we were in college, I mean, he would always talk to them and see them all the time. And it's just funny. And they text him now, you know? And so he's a thoughtful kind of kid. You know, he, he's a pleaser. That's what I would say about Jay. He, he likes he wants to please people. Um, but he's got this competitive desire in him, boy. And you don't, you know, sometimes you can see that from certain individuals. You don't, you don't like when you get around him, you're like, really, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of can almost misplay him a little bit, mm. but he's got this burning desire. Well, boy, I tell you what now, he don't like losing. So where did you see that? Like, cause I always like, I agree with you. There's guys like that, but you see it in these little snippets. So where would you see it? You, you, you saw it in practice. That's where you see it in practice, you know, when when things are getting heated and, and you watch him compete against guys and 
you know, the offense might come out three and out, you know, because we had some pretty good some 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 DBs there too that um, you know, could could play stick em coverage. I mean, they, they we had, you know, Jack Jones was with us and yeah. we had a, you know, Lucas is up in Detroit. And so we had a pretty good defense. And uh we played a lot of tight man to man. And you could see it in seven on seven and when we went in the red zone, I tell you what now, that was fun to watch. What it you, was scary. Yeah. His his competitiveness to to, to, to you know to, they're they're kind of talking, you know, yeah. you know, the corners like talking. They're talking and really? they're like, okay, yeah. all right, you know, and they're kind of going at it, you know, but in a good way, yeah. right? And and so that's what you like about him, you know. It's his his competitiveness and and his ability to to rally the troops, going, hey man, you know. And when if they didn't score, I mean, he was mad. I mean, he'd get mad. I mean, he he'd call them guys over, oh, hey man, look, we, we, come on, we got to do better than this, right? So that that's that's what you're getting if you get this guy. And it's rare to start a guy as a true freshman. Oh yeah, there's so no doubt. What, like, what did he? What qualities did you see that said he's ready I, and he's okay? Well, I I knew this when when you watched him and you just watched practice. You said this is one of the best athletes on the field. Now there's going to be growing pains because it's not you know he in the Pac-12. There's some good schools there, right? But but I thought when he played at C and he played UCLA and he just played you know big. I mean the, the big Michigan State was his probably his. Yeah. His deal, right? It was his <laughs> and beating Oregon, yeah. you know, yeah. fourth rank Oregon comes rolling in there, you know, and, and just the way he performed against big opponents in big games, it was like, okay, you know, and, and and it wasn't the game never was too big for him. Now, we didn't give him a whole lot either early. We just said, look, this is what you do. And when it now he had some pretty good players around him, you know, he had a first, you know, and and but but here again. We gave him enough to make him for him to be comfortable. And then everything else, I just told him, I said, look, whenever you, you know, you sit there and it's in his gray and you don't like it. I used to look at him. I said, run. Mm -hmm. I said, you go run and make a first down. And then we start all over again. I said, just protect the football and protect yourself. That's what you got to do. He said, coach, I got you. Right. So, you know, he's a good study. He'd come to the sideline. He'd get on the phones. He'd talk to the, he'd talk to the OC if he was up in the box. Then I'd come talk to him and I said, what else? I said, you need something? You, 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 what, what, are you, what are you looking at? What do you like? I always wanted to know what he liked early. You know, give him more of that. Give him more. Because, you know, coaches sometimes, we overthink it. You know, you have all these plays and that's great. But it, it ain't about the plays. It's about the players. What does he like? What's working or what's not working? Right. right? And that's the conversations we used to have. What do you need, Coach? Can we do some more of this? Yes. Okay, that's what you want. That's what we're going to do. I get on the headset, call the OC, say, Coach, he's seeing this. He likes this. Can we get a little bit more of that? So he was he understood the communication between, obviously, the OC along with me was very important because I wanted to know what he was seeing because he's the one actually playing. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, he's playing the game. We're we're all watching the game, but he's actually playing. And then I would always ask him, how are the guys in the huddle? Is the huddle OK? Yeah, coach or coach, you might need to say something. Oh, OK. Right. So he he understands that. Right. He gets that part. And that's what I gonna ask you, too, because a big part of quarterback is leadership. Oh. And I've heard he is a quiet guy, but so, but that he doesn't is, mean you're not a yeah. good leader. So how is no. he in that area? No, he is. And, and, and sometimes people mistake that. And they think, well, leadership, you got to be the rock rocker. No, you know, you got to lead them with how you play. And there's moments when you got to say things. And I always told him this. I said, I, I told him in the beginning, I said, look, Jaden, your freshman year, I said, you're not going to be the team captain. I just want you to play quarterback. I said, I don't even want you to be a leader. Just go play quarterback. That'll all take care of itself, right? Because he had enough on his plate. And we had we had a lot of seniors that were good players. They're like, hey, man, he don't need to be the leader right now. Just let him play quarterback. And now, obviously, the next year, you know, he gets better, and all of a sudden he becomes this guy. But I told him, I said, Jaden, you can't, you can't be somebody you're not. I said, you, you don't have to be. I said, what you have to do, you have to know when to speak. And words are powerful. And you don't have to have some long speech. It can be a couple words to a couple guys. And then rally the team together. And what you say in the huddle 
is important. He gets that part. Did you see him in, like, did you see times in that area where he grew oh, in that? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. When when we had the ball in, in big moments on the last drive when we had to go score or something, I mean, you felt really good with him. You just figured, felt, hey, we're going to do this. He's going to find a way to do it. So you're and Most so, of the time he did. So and again, you you have the NFL experience and you know what coaches look for and all that. Like, you know, Drake May, I don't know. Did you watch Drake May much this year? Yeah. I mean, you know, and Drake May's a really good quarterback. I mean, what what you know, he he's in the pocket, he might be the best one mm -hmm. playing from inside the pocket. Jaden is different. Caleb Williams is different. Right. Right. They create chaos because of their ability to make the off schedule play. Not saying Drake may can't do that, right. but he doesn't have the movement skills of those two guys. Right. No, no. <laughs> no, nah, nah, he just, he just don't. And that's okay. Right. And, and, he, and look, I'm hoping all these guys are successful. All these quarterbacks are supposed to go in the first five picks, whatever, wherever it shakes out because they need to be successful because right. if they're successful, the league's better. Right. <laughs> The National Football League is good when the quarterback when there's good quarterback play. When it's not, it's it's really hard. And obviously, top five quarterbacks, it's hard to hit on them because they're typically not going to great teams. What are some of the keys in your experience to making sure it's better for them? Because no, nothing guarantees success, but no. what can make it better? Well, obviously, um, the strength of your defense helps, right? I mean, you 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 have to be defensively. You got to be pretty good. That helps the quarterback. Um, along with a tight end, and, and and I know they're being devalued, but a runner. I think you bring that guy along, right? Be, 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 because if you put it all on his plate, a la what happened in Carolina, it, it ain't fun. It, it's not a whole lot of fun, right? When you don't have a lot of pieces around it. When your best receiver is, is, is you know, is, is, is an older guy till, um, uh, you know, it, it just... It's hard. And that's what it looks like, right? And it's no one's fault. It's not the kid's fault. It's not the team's fault. But like you said, when you go to a team that is struggling. Now, this team, Washington, has some parts. You know, they've got some receivers. They've got a good runner. Uh, they, they, they need some help on their offensive line. There's no doubt about that. We, we, we know that. But, but they have some parts. Now, their problem, they're in the NFC East. You know, and they got to deal with the Cowboys. They got to deal with the Eagles, right? The, the Giants are kind of where Washington is right now. Who, who Who's going to take the, the step? Who's going to take that step, right? And obviously, Washington is, they need a quarterback. They they they, they need a quarterback. And if it's Jaden or whoever it may be, they got to understand, okay, and they will. It's a smart staff, um, good GM. How do we how do we protect him and how do we build this? Because you can't put it all on his plate. Right. You just can't. I, I've seen that. When you do that to a rookie quarterback, oh boy. Oh boy. And there's already enough pressure on him when you draft a rookie quarterback that high. Right. Because people just think, well, he's gonna take the franchise and then no, 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 no. He can't do it by himself now. You better give him some pieces around him because if not, you're in trouble. I mean, this team, you know, look. It, we say what we want. They only scored 19 points a game. Right. right? And, and they turned the ball over a lot. And it was musical chairs with the quarterback. And it was just like, oh. So, guys, you know, sometimes in the offseason, we get to the offseason and we forget what it looked like. <laughs> right. You know, it's kind of old history. And we're all, oh, yeah, new season. We're all excited. I said, but what did you do to improve the roster? Yeah, I know you took the quarterback. But what did you do to help the quarterback? Right. Because if you ain't helped the guy, now he, he's more talented than maybe the guys you had there, but the result will be a little bit better, but it ain't going to be that much better if you don't help him. What are, when, what are some of the traits when you look at college, like, and you talk to people and say, well, you know, guys are inaccurate in college. They don't become more accurate in the NFL. What are some of the other pro red flags as a quarterback from college that maybe are harder to fix in the NFL? Well, I think if he's careless with the ball, mm -hmm. that's the thing you, you, you know, that's the thing you worry about, you know, how, because the ball means everything. And when you, when you, when you allow the team to have extra possessions because you turn the ball over, 
you get yourself in a bad way, right? Um, I think completions are important, very important in the NFL because third down's a big down. That's the big down now, right? Um, and in the NFL now, when you look at it, it's a it's a passing league per se. Right. But sometimes, you know, we we say that, which is right, but it doesn't have to be. That's your choice. We we fall in love with that. And when you're a young, when you have a young quarterback, you got to ask yourself, okay, if it's an even game and we're I'm gonna get 60, 70 plays, how many of those are passes? Right? Is it 45 passes or is it only 30 passes? And what kind of passes are they? Right? So I think you got to realize that according to who the quarterback is. And on the other side of the ball, defensively, what you got. Because the way you kill a defense is real simple. You don't make first downs on offense or you turn the ball over. Then the defense wears down. So how do you protect them? Along with protecting the quarterback, right? right? And that's going to be the strategy they're going to have to try to figure out. You know, what is this? I do know this. Jaden Daniels alone has helped their offensive line has helped their running game if they take him. He's already helped that because of who he is and how he can play the quarterback position. Now, how how else can you help him, right? I mean, that, that's going to be the key. You know, you, you need some offensive linemen to help this guy. Defensively, you got to improve. He, he, can't, he can't sit in the second quarter going, oh, man, we're down 14. Now you're making him throw. Right. You're exposing the guy. Well, you don't want to do that. You 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 want to let him play the game where he can just play the game. That's what happened, you know, down in Carolina. Right. You get down so fast, that poor guy got no shot. And then he doesn't have enough guys around him where they can help him. And it's like, here we go. That's what happened in Washington. That's how you get 60 sacks. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're behind by the middle of the third quarter, you're going, boys. We got to go back and throw. Everybody in the ball yard knows I got to throw a football. And you're going, oh, here we go. So just a couple more on Jaden, too. So one sure. of the things I want to ask, I want to ask people who are much smarter than me about this. So <laughs> when I'm watching them at LSU, a lot of the stuff, you're going to see the beautiful deep ball and the accuracy mm -hmm. on, the, on the fades and all that. They didn't attack the middle of the field as much as maybe some other teams did. Now, I don't want to call that a concern because I think that's unfair. I didn't no. see it. So I'm curious how you interpret that and just how he it was for you throwing between the hashes as well. No, he can throw he can throw it in there. Um, but I think all quarterbacks are more comfortable throwing the ball outside the hashes because there's there's less people there. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it makes I mean, sense. And 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 the coverage is real simple. You see single safety, you go, hey, I got I got I got free access outside, right? You see double safeties, you go, uh oh. But when you see single safety for, for a, a quarterback, he's looking at his receivers. He's going, oh, I got one-on-one -on -one over there, unless you roll the coverage over there. But, but I think that'll be the key for, for, for any young quarterback, how you throw the ball inside the numbers, right? And, and that's going to be important. And, you know, Cliff, uh, who's the OC, he'll, he'll attack he, – He'll attack, he'll attack the hashes in this offense because he understands he's got some matchup in there, some matchups in there that he wants to take advantage of as well. And Jaden, he, he, like I said, he doesn't historically, he don't turn the ball over a lot. Right. And, you know, when we were at Arizona State, he, we threw the ball inside. It wasn't all go right. route. And, and so he can throw it inside. He's measured. He understands where to throw it. Uh, but and and his 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 go to get out of jail free card is his legs. Yeah, and you know it's funny that you say that. So I got one more after this, but just comment. But when I went back and watched the Arizona State stuff, he had to do more of the sliding in the pocket, resetting, and throwing. LSU, there's great protection. You got the season on the outside. Yeah. So I, you kind of piece together the parts of his game based on the film over time. But the last thing is then with him, the area like. 
where do you think his ceiling is? Because he did start to, as you said, he got better at LSU and he started to mature and all that. What is his ceiling and where do you think he can go if he continues on that path? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he, 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 he obviously just continues to grow. He, he has this mindset. He wants to be the best. That's his DNA. And that, that's who he is. He wants to be the best. He, he wants to be one known as one of the better quarterbacks to play in the National Football League. That's what gets him going. That's what motivates Jay Daniels. He's never satisfied, right? He's not, he ain't that guy. He's always looking for something else. Look, he's going to be a first round pick coming to us. He, 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 he wanted to play in the National Football League. He wanted to be a first round pick, right? With, with all that stuff, right? But he's not satisfied. Knowing him, he wants to win a Super Bowl. That's what he's going to say. In, in his brain, he wants to win a Super Bowl. He wants to find a way to win a Super Bowl. That's going to be his mindset. And whatever he has to do, he he's gonna he, he's gonna work at doing that, right? I mean, so that's the kind of guy you're getting. He's not satisfied with what he's accomplished. He's a team kind of guy where he wants the team to accomplish, and he knows I can play a big part of this. Er, man, I appreciate the insight on Jay. I that's you know it, it's going to be a fascinating pick at number two. Yeah, and I think his rise has been really really kind of cool and intriguing as heck. Yeah, it is. It, and, 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 you know, and you're getting a great kid. I mean, you really are. I mean, he's he's fantastic. And, you know, the fan base, if he goes there, they'll enjoy him. They'll enjoy what they, – they'll be like – he'll keep them on their seats. <laughs> they'll be like, oh, here he goes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it, it, would, it would be fun to watch. So, appreciate your time, man, very much. Anytime, my friend. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Herm for joining me. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'll be back probably Thursday, Thursday morning, Thursday night with another episode. So I'll talk to you next time.